Good morning, Metaverse. I'm Thor with the OCG and Mafia Guild, and today we're going to do a multi-ship review of the repair and rescue type ships. And this is near and dear to my heart because I'm actually going to be putting together a proposal for the Council of Peace Assembly, which is an event that's going to be happening uh, in June. And I'll put a link in the description below to the Discord where you can access that. And this is going to be a gathering of the community and guilds to present their guild concepts uh, to hopefully gain members and also there's going to be a little competition to see whose idea uh, is is the best or, or the most interesting and so I'll be presenting that through the Mafia Guild and it's I'm going to call it the Order of the Red Hands and this is going to be focused about around repair and rescue type ships this is going to be the R8, the R6, the Calico Evac and the Calico Medtech these are the ships that we're going to get into so let's get into it First, we have the R8, and I've already done a full review on the R8, so take a look in the description below, and you can look through that a little bit more. A little market update on this one. It is a repair and refueler. It's the only refueler out there, and right now you can pick one up. Its origination price was $10,080, and it is now $2,899, so a couple of them below $3,000. That is an amazing pickup compared to what I've paid for a few of these. But it is a large type ship, a repair and refuel. It has six crew members, captain, pilot, co-pilot, engineer, repair engineer, and cargo foreman. It has large slots in all of its components. So for a large ship, it stands its ground. Two hard points, so a reduction from perhaps a, an assault type vehicle, but uh, you know it will defend itself and it is focused on repair and refueling. So it has a large cargo slot, which is great for collecting some extra scrap or doing some runs on the side. And then it also has two capital fuel cells and you can see those on the side. And so the R8 is really the cornerstone of the Red Hands fleet and that game strategy that I've put together. One, because refueling is one of the more rare characteristics. It's the only ship so far that's been released. I'm sure there will be more, but this is a large type ship, so it can service uh, capital type ships, even commander type ships, and uh, anything down below that. So it has a wide range of, of ability to serve other ships. It is uh, also a repair ship, so it has multiple functions and you know, when you're looking at profitability and reliability for making said profit, its versatility really comes in. And the Pierce manufacturer, I like the way that they utilize the space and it's always very clean and, and well thought through. And so the Pierce R8 is a large type ship that is going to be the cornerstone of, of that type of, of fleet. The next ship we'll get into is going to be the R6 to see its little brother. So this is the R6. The R6 is origination price $1,600. It's trading right now for $699, so 700 bucks is what you can pick this up for. And that is going to be essential for most comprehensive fleets. It is your classic support type character and any group in a battle conflict type game without a support character or group is at a severe disadvantage. So the R6s are gonna be a big deal. There are 11,200 of them as the original supply. So there's a good number of them, but it's gonna be an integral part for all fleets. Three crew slots. The components are all small except for the missile bay and countermeasures. So that is a reduction in firepower and two hard points, small slots. Uh, but it has a, a medium sized repair slot and it's cargo, uh, small cargo for a little bit extras uh, on the side. And so this ship is, as you can see, would be great for a commander or capital uh, size ship to be in its fleet and to send out and repair it to prolong its ability to engage in, in long battles. It's laid out pretty straightforward. It all makes sense. It's mandibles to be able to do the repairs. It looks you know, like a small target, pretty low profile. 
the layout is very efficient. I don't think this is going to be one that you explore deep into space all by yourself. Uh, this is going to be that support type ship. And so with that gameplay in mind, uh, that is how I would use the R6. And so the next part, those are the two different sizes of repair ships that we have right now. Um, this does not do a refuel. So unlike the R8, it does not refuel, but those are, are the repair ships that you'll be playing with. Um, so depending on the size budget that you have um, and, and what kind of fleet you're trying to build will depend which one you're gonna choose. So next we're gonna go into the rescue type ships and take a look at those. Okay, Calico Evac essential if you're going to do rescue this is going to be your queen bee when you send it out to rescue in a a war situation its origination price is 2200 on the market right now it's at 850 so significantly reduced it's held its price a little bit better than some of the ships definitely in the medium to small size ships it's held its value pretty well comparatively the crew size is six crews captain pilot co-pilot to rescue and a drone operator. Uh, that'll make things go a lot faster with the drones. You take a look at the components. Everything is medium except for the missile bay and countermeasures. And so reduction in, in defense as expected. And then you have a large med bay slot and a medium bay slot. So for a medium sized ship that is very much focused on the med bays, a medium cargo slot and a medium drone slot. Um, so that's all going to function very well for the Calico Evac. This one has probably the most pictures and the most detail out of all the ships that are available. So this is a good one to go through if you want to theory craft and you really want to get a good idea of the ship and its capabilities, potential capabilities um, as we get into the game. But the Calico Evac is laid out really efficiently. Again, really beautiful ship. I. I, th I think, um, in in the way that the Calco manufacturer designs are. And, you know, very efficient with the escape pods you see, the little orange escape pods coming in through the side hatch. There's a top hatch where the drones come out right next to the, the number uh, 02 Calico. That hatch is where it opens right here. And then you've got the crew areas and the cargo bay the lift from the bottom you can actually see that lift bringing someone up from the bottom so a very efficient way to to enter and exit the ship very much focused on that that rescue gameplay i think it's well laid out and this is the one where you send it out to the general conflict area and then you send out the drones to go and gather the characters that need to be rescued and we'll take a look at the med tech as well and show you how they can work in concert with each other and it has a lot of synergy when going out for these escape pods which are multiple size for the different characters types and so let's get into the med tech and show you how those two ships actually work together very well all right so the calico med tech is sort of the baby sister of the calico evac and this one is price of 860 and the current trading is under $300. So uh, 298. So you can pick that up for pretty reasonable price for what it does. There's gonna be 14,000 of them. So there's a larger number of them, which is good. And it's gonna be an essential part for that rescue operation. I think that's gonna be less of a sizable game loop than the repair and refuel but it's still gonna be a very important one for reducing the damage and the overall loss if a ship does get destroyed. So you have three crew members and then you look at the components and then it has both two weapon hard points are extra small, missile bay extra small and countermeasures extra small. And so it is reduce, uh, definitely a reduction in the firepower and, but it has a medium size med bay. So oversized med bay and a cargo slot. And this is the one where you say it's self-sustaining. It, it has everything that it needs to go out and rescue and it has a med bay. Um, so you can fly the ship solo, but I think it would work best in concert with the evac, as you see in this picture, where it's sort of the worker bee that flies out and collects the escape pods that are, are further out from the uh, evac and brings it back to the 
larger ship and works in concert to get some of the more difficult escape pods or if you're looking for a specific character that's uh, stranded out there and you need to send it out there to say it's possibly still a an active war zone um, you need something with a little bit of its own defense uh, more so than just the drones from the evac uh, you send the med techs out and do the rescue operations that way. And so working together, those have a lot of synergies. And when, you, when you're looking at the way that ships work together is gonna to be really important. You know, any f comprehensive fleet or, or there's gonna be a several different f uh, sizes of fleets and a fully comprehensive fleet is gonna have each one of these types of ships in it. But not all fleets are gonna be able to man and or have the assets to do that. And so, to have a, a guild, a fleet specifically built uh, for the rescue repair like the Red Hands and to focus on those synergies that those those types of ships have with each other are going to be able to, to help specialize in that and reduce the cost and increase the efficiency of repair and rescues. And repair and rescue, the concept is to reduce the ultimate damage and destruction that is inflicted on the players. Now, conflict and destruction are extremely important for the actual game Star Atlas, and I'm gonna talk about that uh, real quick, just, just for a little bit. Reducing that amount of damage to the actual player, I think is gonna be very important. If we can reduce total ship destruction, then the building back from the blueprint um, all the resources that it takes, the amount of time that it knocks a player out of the game, um, I think that's going to be detrimental for the player base and to grow that player base. To allow that destruction is part of the burn mechanism, it uh, stimulates the economy of it, it's part of the fun and excitement of the game, so it doesn't. we don't need to eliminate that. We don't want to create a bunch of kumbaya alliances where nobody's doing anything. But for the total ship destruction, that's going to prevent people from going out to the high risk zones. And so by providing this, this service of the emergency uh, rescue from the Order of the Red Hands, that's going to embolden other players to go out into that, that high risk zone and to explore the game and to expand what we can do in Star Atlas. Uh, so that's the helping the community aspect of it. But then as far as a consistent profit income model, the repair, rescue and refuel is going to be a continual aspect of the game. It is a, a cornerstone of, of what Star Atlas is. It's a game focused around conflict, around danger around exploration, uh, going out as far as you can, and testing the boundaries, and maybe you run out of gas. Um, but if you've got the red hand there, um, gonna be the angel on your shoulder, then you're much more likely to go out and, and do and be the most that you can in that game. Uh, so that's the core concept. These are the ships that are going to make up that fleet. And hopefully uh, this was helpful. You don't have to worry about liking or subscribing. But if you know somebody that would find this useful or want to join the Order of the Red Hand um, or join the Mafia, then share it with them. And if you could do that, then today was a good day. Good morning, Metaverse.